Good morning. Shabbat Shalom. Exact the Truth Body Fellowship Believers and of course the Exact the Truth Landscape of Body Fellowship Believers across that fruited plain. My name is Pastor Solera R. Man Jr. Shepherd and leading emissary of Exacting Truth Ministries in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and welcome to our Exacting Truth Ministry Saturday Sabbath Facebook Live. Bow your heads and pray with me, if you will. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day. We thank you for all that you've done and all that you are. We're asking that you come into this live, this uh, meeting and fellowship, this service to you today. We're asking that you grace it with your presence. We're asking that you speak in our hearing, that it be you and not we ourselves. And as we incline our ears and minister grace to every hearer and allow us to leave the better for coming no longer the same. We thank you for your protection and your provision. We thank you for your sustenance. And we're asking that you just move by your power. We're asking that you remember those that need remembering everywhere. We're asking that you remember the sick and shut in. We're asking that you remember those who have suffered loss or may be bereaved today. Earth has no sorrow, the heaven cannot heal. We thank you for all those who you've given more time, given another year. We thank you for just everything that you're doing, that the words of our mouths and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And we're asking that you continue to order our steps. And we're asking that you live big inside of us, have your way. And we ask these blessings, prayer, deliverance, salvation, healing, and hope in that great name, Yeshua, Yahushua HaMashiach, the Christ's name we pray, amen. Well, blessings this morning. We're blessed to be here. Blessed to have another day that the Most High has made and richly blessed us to be alive. What he got on today? Well, listen, we were all week away on a business trip on uh, the most southern Gulf Coast of Mississippi, the Deep South, beloved. And uh, we've been traveling uh, all night into the morning. And so we just threw something on because we got a word and the word is more important than how we look. But we're grateful for each and every one of you all today. Come on in. How y'all doing this morning? Blessings to you. I'm telling you, man, we flew down there on Delta and Delta is flying all around the world. So we need to remain prayerful and uh, we need to listen. We ended the year. Y'all need to go back to the last message of 2020, because I'm telling you, the Most High told us to say some things, and we're not wishing evil on the world, but some of y'all, uh, I'm telling you, man, uh, you put your bikini on too quick. But we need to be prayerful because this world that we're going towards, we're not going backwards if you don't start looking forward. But nevertheless, I digress. I wanna celebrate my wonderful mother-in-law our precious uh, body fellowship and landscape member joanne griffin on another year he probably not watching he watches every now and then but my father-in-law uh, larry evans he had a birthday recently it's a lot of birthdays in august i know one of my mothers i got just a group of mothers i love my mothers the people who have stood by uh, you know, and even stood in lieu of Diana C. Mann. That's number one. Hey, mama, blessings to you this morning. I know you're watching. But there have been people that have shaped and have popped me in the back of the head and kept me on uh, a right walking course. And I know Mother Nandale Smith, her birthday is upcoming. Looking forward to the Most High blessing her with another year. So all of you all who are getting ready to celebrate birthdays. No big eyes, no little U's, but just some that come to mind. I know they do a, an advertising thing, you know, kind of like displaying the birthdays. I know our media director, Lila Brown, is getting ready to celebrate one. So blessings to all of you all that's either received or getting ready to receive another year. Don't want to slide anyone. So just blessings if you didn't hear your name. We love you. and a whole lot you can do about it. All right, y'all know what we do on Saturday Sabbath. We hold up the Holy Writ. Why? Because it contains 
words of the Most High and words that were left the record for our learning. So symbolically, we hold it up because we look up to it and not down to our own understanding. We are to look into the hills from which cometh our help, our help coming from the Most High who have made the heavens and the earth. And I'm going to ask that you join me in Genesis. <coughs> Bless you. Genesis chapter 25, we're going to be reading verses 29 through 34. Genesis chapter 29 verses, Genesis chapter 25 rather, excuse me, verses 29 through 34. And if you have the capability, I'm going to ask that you join me in the English Standard Version of the English translation of these scripture verses. I pray that you all are doing well. I pray that you're acting Josephically. Didn't we enjoy an evening and a study with the Davises on Wednesday? They said that they were a little nervous, but it's nothing to be nervous about. Salute to your Davises and thank you for covering while pastor was away. And we're gonna hear from them in the future. I know that Secretary Davis said, I couldn't wait till it was over, but I am, I'm telling y'all, I enjoyed them and you all just need to be confident in the most high. And we need, you're gonna see um, by the duration of this lesson today, this message that the most high have given us and boy, has he given us a word to pour out this morning. You're gonna see that we need to place front and center the examples of the that the most high have placed in our lives because we we're sort of, we've sort of been dropping the ball regarding how we address society and particularly the untoward generations and how we're allowing the world to be shaped we need to place images and examples of what the most high have done and the good things that the most high have done because otherwise the enemy is just going to completely rob and completely overtake the narrative. So I'm encouraged by what we witnessed on Wednesday and I can't wait. There's gonna be other couples. So y'all need to get ready. Some of y'all are gonna pack your bags and start running now. No, but there are gonna be other couples that we're gonna place in front of the world via an exact and truth prism because we need young and old, middle-aged, we need to begin to impact the culture. So I appreciate the Davises, we salute you. And I'm telling you, you all are comical as well. If you have joined me in Genesis chapter 25, verses 29 through 34, and if you were kind enough not to read it yet because I was bloviating and encouraging the Davises and you just don't have no patience, we're going to ask that you join us there. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ. If you've got it, just simply reply where you are by saying, I have it. Herein is the reading of the Holy Writ, and it reads as thus. Once... When Jacob was cooking stew, Esau, his twin brother, came in from the field and he was exhausted. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted. In parentheses, it says, therefore, his name was called Edom. He was called Edom because when he was born, his skin tone and even he was a hairy child and uh, the bible states that his appearance was of a very reddish hue so he was known as esau but he was also known as edom and esau was a born hunter coming out first and jacob coming in holding on to his uh ankle his brother following him whose name means supplanter. Well, he stayed back home. He was a little bit more domestic. I don't know if he was a metrosexual or not, you know, but uh, he wasn't a man of the field. And he, you know, he was at home cooking and Esau came in from the field and was exhausted and uh, just flabbergasted and famished and saw that his brother was cooking and was willing to just sacrifice it all for a meal. Listen, if I can digress, you shouldn't lose your soul over a Twinkie. Back to the message. Verse 31, Jacob, Esau's brother said, sell me your birthright now. Wow. Wow. That's crazy. So we're going to just go right to your purpose. 
we got to be careful who we interact with because some people are not just after our possessions or trying to supplant our blessings. Some people are trying to completely absorb and infiltrate our lives so they can rob us of our purpose for themselves. Lord have mercy. Jacob said to his older brother, sell me your birthright now. I kind of got stuck. I'm not going to get stuck today, but I just want y'all to contemplate. How do you go? He didn't ask to borrow the chariot or he didn't say, you know, can I play with a couple of your tools or some of your hunting weaponry? You the leader and you're the successor of this family that the most high have called. Give me that. Savage, beloved. Let me continue. Jacob said, sell me your birthright. The man just asked for a bowl of pottage. That, that, that's how the King James Version phrases it. And the man, I'm not going to stay stuck, beloved, but it's like, sometimes your worst enemy can be the members of your own household, but that's what scripture says. Sell me your birthright now. 32, Esau said, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Look at his outlook and his attitude, beloved. Jacob said, swear to me now. So he, meaning Esau, swore to him and sold his birthright to his brother Jacob for what scripture says is a bowl of lentils. Those must have been some good lentils. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. Lord have mercy. May the Most High add a blessing and an enriching to the reading of his holy writ today. For the time that is mine this morning, beloved, the title of the text is simply titled Exhaustion. This is going to be a blessing and a help to someone that receives it today. I got a question for you all this morning. How powerful is tiredness? I'm tired right now and probably look tired to so many of you all, but hold me up. How powerful is tiredness, weariness, fatigue, and exhaustion, beloved? What type of impact does being tired have on your everyday life? I'm asking you this morning, have you ever been, for example, tired of being tired? Y'all have heard that phrase and that adage, listen, I'm tired of being tired. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Exhaustion impacts each and every one of us, and it produces an endless array of byproducts and consequences across a broad spectrum of experiences and circumstances in our everyday lives. We function differently when we're tired. Can anybody say amen to that? For example, some folks simply do not process information or data as quickly when they're tired. Some people suffer significant loss in response and reaction times to things while they are experiencing or suffering fatigue. You need to be careful when you're driving. We've done a lot of driving and a lot of flying over this last week. And I'm telling you, you got to be careful because you don't have the same awareness when you're exhausted and you're behind the wheel. You can kill yourself or kill somebody else. Many people experience deficits in temperance when they are exhausted. Y'all know what Chippin' Man is referring to. You find that it's just a tad bit more difficult to tolerate what one perceives as foolishness or inane behavior when you're tired. In other words, beloved, you have a shorter fuse when you haven't had that much rest. We need to be careful around one another because sometimes we've entered into altercations because somebody just decided that they were going to act a complete clown and you weren't having it because you weren't well rested. Tempers often flare easier when you're in need of a nap. Anger 
can be harder to suppress when you're exhausted. Folk just saying stupid stuff and all you are looking forward to is your sleep number bed and you've just had enough. You just don't have the tolerance that you would if you were more and better rested. Lord have mercy. Is this man actually ministering about being tired? Yes, because oftentimes we don't take a precise look at how it impacts our lives and our walk. Just look at what transpired concerning Esau. This whole thing would have played out differently, but Esau was tired and he was hungry and he wasn't having it. How many times has fatigue been a mitigating factor in violent exchanges that results in severe injury or in some cases, even homicide, simply because you were in the right place at the wrong time with a person that was exhausted. And quite possibly the most common shared deficit of all those who suffer exhaustion, y'all had to know it was coming, is a substantial reduction in your and my patience. When you're tired, you're simply not as patient as if you were well rested. The classic proverb originally coined by 14th century English poet William Langley, which is often mistaken for scripture, states that patience is a virtue. That's right, some of you all would be scholars. You've been quoting for most of your life that that's a scripture and we need to study to show ourselves approved. It's not a scripture. It is out of one of William Langland's poetic pieces. Patience is a virtue, but all virtue can go out the window oftentimes when you're tired. Many, if not most, can more easily be provoked when they're tired. Is there any wonder why the devil waited until the Christ was exhausted and famished to test and tempt him in the fourth chapters of both Matthew and Luke? When approaching one's brink, as it were, or nearing one's edge or precipice, oftentimes the only thing needed to push someone over the edge is a need for them to be fatigued. The odds that you will panic, for example, in an emergency situation or scenario greatly increases the more exhausted you are. Fatigue often clouds our judgment. We often make more mistakes that we would not ordinarily make if we were well rested. Exhaustion often serves as a heavy influence upon and towards an impetuous outlook on life itself, meaning people are quicker to give up and to throw in the towel when they're tired. For those who struggle spiritually, my Lord, Shepherd man, this is depressing, oh, but we need to hear it and hang in there with us, beloved. We're going somewhere with this. Those who struggle spiritually and suffer severely with anxiety, depression, and or a myriad of other mental illnesses, the feeling of inescapable exhaustion can be the last straw necessary in many of those individuals, heavy consideration or actual enacting of extreme measures such as self-harm or even unfortunately suicide due to the fatigue that they feel. Have you ever been anxious out of your mind or so severely depressed and you can't find an ample way to a brighter place or to a more even killed plateau? Tiredness alone, sleep deprivation alone because of these maladies can push a person to their very brink. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Thank the Most High for his mercy if we've sojourned through these chapters in our life and we're still here because I'm telling you, all it takes, one straw to break 
a large camel back oftentimes can just be the fact that I'm tired. Don't have to be another bill that's coming in that you don't have the resources to pay. Doesn't have to be somebody trying to abuse you or attack you. Sometimes that last lever, that last button to be pushed is that, listen, I'm exhausted. Doubt increases exponentially when a person has grown tired of believing that things will improve for them. We more readily abandon our dreams when we've grown tired of striving towards them, working towards them seemingly to no avail. Beloved, somebody out there this morning, this is reaching because you are tired. You are downright exhausted. When extremely fatigued, Many give in and succumb to death rather than continue to trust in the overwhelming odds of staying alive when battling severe health ailments, for example, or after suffering critical injury. Some people get tired of the fight, tired of enduring the pain, tired of the constant cycle of procedures that don't seem to work. Lord have mercy. In Galatians chapter six, verse nine, Paul the apostle implored the body fellowship at Galatia not to be weary in well-doing. For in due season, ye shall reap if you faint not. Or in other words, beloved, you will eventually succeed if your exhaustion of the working process to succeed the literal grind day after day that you're on to become successful and to accomplish your task. Well, you eventually will succeed if your exhaustion while you're working does not get the better of you. Why is this scripture so important, you may ask, the one that we've just quoted from Galatians chapter six. It's important because like Esau in Genesis chapter 25, many of us give up on a surprising number of life altering opportunities. We give up on significant and important relationships oftentimes simply because we have grown sick and tired of them. Now y'all saved, and I know I haven't mentioned this more than likely since last year, but you have an innumerable amount of the outpouring and oil of the Holy Ghost. So y'all just do something else for a second while I talk to the people out there that know good and well that you've gotten sick and tired of somebody. Sometimes people grow apart. Sometimes you just have had, you're winded. Why didn't you cook this evening? I'm sick of cooking and I'm sick of you. Lord, we need the Holy Ghost, do we not? No, everybody in exact and truth landscape land, you ain't never got sick of nobody. You have the love of the Lord and it ain't nothing that nobody else can do about it. But I'm talking to the people who get sick and tired this morning. Every day folks grow sick and tired of the marriages they're in of the friendships that they have. They get tired of the wounds that need mending in their lives, problems that need fixing in their lives, jobs that they're working every day in their lives. Listen, children that they're raising, we need to pray. The outlook of this generation in many aspects is not bad because every parent on the globe is full of the Holy Ghost. We sick of some of these children. And they sick of us. Yeah, every day, folks are growing sick and tired of the communities that they live in. Pray for me. Schools that they attend. The roads that they've traveled in their lives. Messages that they've heard. Some of y'all sick of me. And promises that they've made that go unfulfilled. Beloved, we talking about exhaustion this morning. Exhaustion is more often than not the trigger that releases mediocrity into our life standards and choices. You simply get tired of trying. You simply, I hope y'all don't get tired of bathing. 
Exhaustion is the culprit and the reason for a whole lot more stuff than what we would like to take a look at, beloved, today. For some folks, exhaustion loosens the tongue. This can be a good or it can be a bad thing. For example, sleep deprivation is a classic technique utilized in enhanced inter interrogation and torture in order to extract secrets or a confession from captives or enemies of the state, as it were, or opposing operatives. When some folks are tired, they often end up sharing information in which they have been previously sworn to secrecy regarding. And yet for others, a bout with exhaustion can bring to the surface and make audible for all to hear things that for more reasons than not desperately needed to be shared or expressed openly. Wow. This brings us to a perspective and a viewpoint regarding exhaustion. And I don't have far to go. I'm tired right now because of my travels, but the most high, I, we were working on this message while we were on the plane, beloved. So we're grateful and always blessed to be a vessel to pour out but I'm gonna go somewhere and get myself together. So this is a short one this morning, but I digress. Yes, it brings us to this closing perspective and viewpoint regarding exhaustion, because there's many ways to look at this and we need to look at all of these ways that we can view the out of our prism exhaustion because everybody don't need to look at it the same way regarding the direction that your life is headed. So, Listen intently, because this is going to be something for your life. <clears throat> Brings us to the viewpoint regarding exhaustion that many of us may examine and contemplate far less, far less often than we actually should, which is when it is actually a good thing, India, to be completely exhausted. Huh? Yeah. Many of us are not tired enough and actually could stand to be more tired, more tired of yourself, for example. More tired of your very own stinking thinking, as Precious Bishop used to so eloquently call it in many of the truthful sermons that the Most High God of the Hebrews gave him to minister in times past. Tired of the daily negativity that many of us often pour into the universe and our personal surroundings. You do not grow tired of complaining. Sometimes you should. You do not grow tired of challenging the most high when you pray and you didn't even give him a chance to answer. Some of us ain't tired enough of ourselves. Tired of the constant pessimism. Nothing works. Nothing is good. Nothing is positive. Tired of the endless doubt. Don't believe nothing. Don't have faith the size of a mustard seed or the size of toe jam. Don't, just doubtful and just uncooperative and just negative. You need to be, listen, you're not tired enough of yourself. Doubt that things can change. Doubt that things can improve with a little faith and hard work. Looking at life more positively. Glass half full, beloved, as opposed to glass half empty. I'm not just talking to y'all today. Some of us, I mean, we should be exhausted, tired of saying and staying the same old spiteful person that we've always been, tired of committing the same sins. How many times you go commit the same sin, get the same karmic and kismet result? and still ain't tired of committing the same stuff that trip you up every time. Tired of making the same mistakes or on purposes, as we like to call them. You know what you was doing. Tired of simply settling for the same mediocre results and outcomes. No sooner that you get out from under somebody else, you get on top of another person and it has the same result. Aren't you tired? The psalmist stated, in Psalm chapter 84, verse 11, that no good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. It's way past the time that we should be tired of walking 
in our own unrighteousness. It's completely okay to be sick of your sinful self. Sick and tired of the results you achieve when you know you're not walking completely in the Most High's purpose for your life. Exhausted of looking the other way when you should be shining your light for the kingdom or sharing truth when nothing but lies are running rampant all throughout the world in which we live. Looking for somebody else to tell the truth. Aren't you tired of holding your tongue? Why don't you speak up in your surroundings and your environment? Beloved, I'm telling you that some things we're exhausted in that we need to hold on, but some stuff we ought to be sick of. The Most High prophesied through his messenger Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 28 through 31 to his people stating, and I'm closing. Has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fadeth not, neither is weary? Listen, there is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faith, and to them that have no might, he increaseth strength. Thank you, Father. Even the youth shall faint, and they are fainting, beloved, and be weary, and we're weary, beloved, and the young men shall utterly fall. However, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Listen, there are multiple ways that we can view exhaustion this morning, beloved. And there are multiple decisions and actions that we desperately need to take concerning our fatigue. Some of the things that exhausted and have exhausted us, well, is killing us today. And then from another vantage point, some things, if we do not become more exhausted, we are certainly going to demise and our fate is not going to be positive. Some of us need to put on strength as the Apostle Paul encouraged the body fellowship at Galatia, whereas some of us need to completely give up and surrender our aberrant walk altogether. Yet and still, some of us need to apply both measures to certain areas of our lives. It's complicated, beloved. Some things you ought to be tired of and then some stuff you need to put on strength. What I implore you to do today is to choose wisely. Because, beloved, oftentimes, all it takes is just a yawn to change everything regarding your life. Will you bow your heads and pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for truth this morning. I thank you for allowing myself, and my precious wife and my youngest daughter to travel and to travel safely and to still hear coherently what your spirit is saying to us, pouring into us to pour out on your people. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for not suitably and properly addressing our exhaustion and our fatigue today and in other instances and in other cases heavenly father forgive us for not being tired enough we're asking that you save deliver keep all those forgive all those who seek forgiveness through repentance and confessing and forsaking their aberrant walking ways their unrighteous commissions and omissions and we know that there is hope we know that there is salvation for all those who desire it because of the precious sacrifice of your son, which died on the cross but didn't stay dead, rose again and is alive today, sitting on the right hand of the Most High Father, making intercession for us at this very moment of which even today, this lesson and this sermon is an example of said intercession. And we're asking that you make us sozo, make us safe, the English says, or the English translation says save, which means preserve those who have participated in salvation until such a time that your son returns for us all, that we might dwell with you in infinite time. We ask these blessings and many more in that great name, Yeshua, Yehoshua HaMashiach, the Christ's name we pray. Listen, be blessed today. I know you're tired, but his yoke is easy. His burdens are light. Cast your cares upon him for he cares for you. We love you. There's not a whole lot you can do about it. 
We'll see you for Wednesday's Bible study. Join us there. And until then, Shabbat Shalom. Blessings to you.